The doors creaked inside, a delicate vibration causing each bone in my body to vibrate. I sat on the bed in silence. Sitting still was a luxury for me, being homeless made being stationary something of a struggle. There was no bed to sleep on, and since going in for work the night before there was no more hope of that being changed. Walking back in the evening was no easy feat. Standing for a couple of hours each night to do this became a problem. By the end of my shift the rest of the day was beginning to look increasingly hard. Standing was an agony, so if it had been a particularly bad day the problem would have been exacerbated. I wondered how on earth I would cope. All through my youth I'd felt, perhaps, embarrassed at my ability to pay attention. I always had good grades and high test scores. If my interest wavered, I could turn my brain off. Perhaps I'd made it too easy for myself, because over time I came to realize I wasn't even smart enough to be at the bottom of my class. If my performance faltered I could use people, turn my nervous energy to a light show of emotional quivers. To be better than anyone else meant it had to be one of the harder subjects, English literature being in the first category of that, in which I could excel. When I began to understand the pressure that most of my peers were under to excel, my understanding of being competitive as a person began to unravel. I realized that being very smart had gotten me into all sorts of trouble. For instance, if I couldn't get out of English as quickly as I could in a fight, my future would be precarious. At that time I thought I could cope with anything. As time went on I realized I could only cope with what I could do, and what I could do was feel pain. I went to university because it seemed to be what I should do, not for me, but for my parents. While they weren't terribly rich, my father was an engineer, his job giving him access to good grades. It didn't matter that I couldn't even write a thesis, that degree brought me social respect. The more I did as I was told, however, the more distant I felt from myself. At times I thought I was making things up, not just the details of my world but the feeling that all I was doing was expected of me. As I gained acceptance in society it also seemed I'd won my parents' love. They would visit me, unannounced, bearing baked goods, and offer money when I wanted it. They wanted me to stay safe, healthy, happy. What if they knew I didn't want to be all those things? The years I'd spent on university work had taught me what to expect from each day, what the future might hold. I would begin to feel as though the ground were moving, my heart racing in fear. There was only one time in my life when I'd ever felt that feeling before. The year 2027 was an exceptionally cold one, spring and summer having barely moved on from where they were in the late 1980s. Each day's shower was the only warmth, and winter blanketed the trees and fields. I didn't know what people were feeling, what worries weighed them down but it felt as though we'd gone through more rain than anyone had ever known. Four days I'd sat and watched the world moving in its long slow progress. Watching made me depressed, even as I watched myself looking down. There was something about life without anything to do. I didn't know how I would feel when things began to happen. What could it be like to be me, my life? I wasn't able to imagine it. I was born in the year 2100. That makes me one of the first generation of humans to be born after the turn of the millennium. And it also means that I am the first generation to be born into a world where climate change is a reality. I remember the first time I saw the effects of climate change. I was just a child, and we were living in the city. The summers were always hot, but that year, they were especially hot. The heat was so intense that the concrete began to buckle and the asphalt to melt. The city was a disaster. But it was nothing compared to what was happening in the rest of the world. I remember watching the news and seeing the images of floods and famines. Entire countries were being wiped off the map by the effects of climate change. And there was nothing that anyone could do to stop it. I remember thinking to myself, this is the world that I am going to grow up in and I swore that I would do everything in my power to make sure that my children would never have to see the world that I saw. I dedicated my life to fighting climate change. And I'm proud to say that, today, the world is a better place because of it. 
but the fight is far from over. The effects of climate change are still being felt all over the world. And we have to continue to fight if we want to make sure that our children and grandchildren never have to see the world that we saw.